Hey, welcome back to the PR Essentials Summit. Thanks for joining us for this panel. We're talking about thought leadership today here with John Biggs. Welcome to the PR Playbook Podcast, the only podcast giving you actionable skills and advice you need to execute a strategic PR program. Warning, what you hear next may lead to brand awareness and increased sales and customer exposure. Now here's your host, Rinjini Joshua. Hello and welcome to the PR Essential Summit series. This is our third year running with the PR Essential Summit, where we talk to experts about what happened in 2023 and what we foresee for future trends in different industries, including social media, SEO, obviously PR, media relations, journalism, content development. And so I hope you guys enjoy this series as we kick off the new year and get ready to build proactive strategies to make your communications programs better. And as always, make sure you email me if you have any questions, ronjini at thesilvertelegram.com. Enjoy the series. Hello, John. How are you? Howdy, howdy. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for the summit. And before, you've been on the summit before as like part of our media roundtable. We've talked about so many different things in the past few years. I guess we've been, this is the third year, I think. So I'd love to just kind of talk about that and get your read on what's going on with the media today and just content in general in the media right now. Sure. Well, I mean, look, I think there, I think we're at a massive crossroads for the media and, and where I'm talking specifically about journalists, especially lazy journalists. There's a, we're in this, there, there was a, I guess a hundred year period when you could get a job as a journalist to sit behind a desk and write a couple stories a week. and they didn't have to be amazing. They didn't really have to be super well-researched, but as long as you did your job, you were fine. At this point, and this has all changed over the past couple of years, obviously blogging kind of changed a lot and, uh, and a lot of the online media changed a lot of this, but at this point, that's done. Completely, completely destroyed. So there's a huge problem. And like I like commented yesterday, I think like any full-time journalist working right now should like look into HVAC or carpentry or something just to get out of a newsroom because it's going to be a bloodbath very shortly. Oh. And it's all generative AI. I mean, it's, I use it every day. I use it to create content that like for client content, sometimes if necessary, uh, it's like having an intern that's really, really smart, but is also simultaneously really, really stupid sitting right yeah. next to you. And you can say, Hey, can you tell, can you write me a paragraph on the history of, I don't know, COD and it'll give it to you in an instant. If you ask it to write a essay on why COD is important for, I don't know, humanity, it's going right. to completely mess that up. But otherwise, if you just need something super basic, it's, it's really it's the way to go. Yeah, AI has definitely presented now all these new challenges. And I think that's one of the reasons I like talking to you, because I feel like you, I mean, you've been a journalist for so long and you know how to work with content and how to make it work for readers and for your editors. I think thought leadership, we've you know, as an agency, we've been talking about thought leadership pretty, pretty heavily for the last five years, I would say, and really making some of our CEOs and experts establish themselves a little bit more when it comes to content. Mm -hmm. People are very afraid to put their opinion out there. So we have to get them to kind of wiggle their way into that. But I would love to get on get your, I want to hear about your AI thoughts on it too. But first, I would love to just kind of what makes good thought leadership. I think that's a huge thing. A lot of our clients are like, hey, just write an article for me. I can do that. Mm -hmm. but it, I don't have your opinion. Like, <laughs> how am I supposed to do that? So what, what do you what are your thoughts on that? So this is this is an interesting question. And I've been and I've been doing a lot of thinking on this and a lot. And I actually have a lot of experience simply because uh, my really good buddies uh, is doing this, like controlling the thought leadership faucet right now over at a, at a website that I used to work at. He is pointing out that everybody is sending him the same junk on a, almost a daily basis. So, and he's calling it junk and we'd all probably call it junk if you read it. It's definitely nothing, it's definitely nothing that you want to, yeah, it's definitely nothing exciting. Now, the biggest issue with that is that 
Uh, he's going to get super frustrated with the same PR person, the same person, CEO, sending the same thing. He's, he's gotten probably about, I think it was like 70 or 100 20, 20, uh, 24 prediction posts Friend. pitched <laughs> yeah, just now. So anything that, so the, and what's happened, I think, is that a lot of PR people come to a, come to a client and say, we're going to make you a content calendar and the content, and everybody wants a content calendar. There's no such thing as a content calendar because content is constantly changing, right? Right. So to create a content calendar for, for some CEO and like to this week is going to be about, I don't know why we're really great. And this week's going to be about why Christmas is very similar to a, I don't know, an IT, IT, <laughs> whatever. The, yeah. Santa's workshop is very similar to the offices of some IT company. It does, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. It's, it's impossible. So it's completely useless. It's a completely wasted effort. Okay. So unless the, unless the CEO, unless the, the person you're talking to is very specifically behind and understands the topic and it's a useful topic. A lot of the sites aren't going to take it. So, so this is, this is in particular talking about sites that'll publish guest posts. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're talking about like LinkedIn posts, you can do that all day long and do whatever you and, want. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's, it's really a free for all that. That's fine. If you want to do a calendar or whatever, but for, but for a live, but for a, I don't know, a wall street journal byline or for a TechCrunch byline or for any kind of byline that's out there, you're just wasting your, you're just wasting your time if you're trying to like suggest something that's based on the timing of the, of the post, as opposed to the, uh, as opposed to the things that are happening in the, in the, in the industry. The quality of the trend. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, let's, let's say, let's say we're talking about Gen AI and you have to have a super, super, super interesting take on it, Gen AI, because what, what are a lot of these sites doing with these guest posts? What they're doing is they're actually putting them behind a fire a paywall. Yeah. So Joe CEO or Joanna CEO posts up this thing. It's behind a paywall. It gets the site a little bit of subscription traffic because that CEO is so excited that they're going to send it out to all their friends and they're going to get you're going to get people who are actually going to pay for this thing. That's exactly the business model what these guys are doing. It's mm -hmm. there's no there's no like there's no they're not trying to be munificent to the to the to the universe. They're not trying to comfort the afflicted. They're basically just trying to make some money. So you got to have to think about it in those terms. So what's the, what's the answer then? Guest posts or thought leadership posts have to be useful, have to be interesting, have to be readable. They have to be human. I did this. And when I did that, I failed. Here's why I failed. I really suck, but you don't have to suck as bad as I did. That's basically kind of like your, the, the story that you need to tell. Anything other than that is just, is just pandering and it's going to be seen as either deeply problematic or useless or or ignored so you're you're kind of you're kind of in this in this catch-22 you have to be either vulnerable and tell a real story or you have yeah. to or you just just i just stick it on medium or stick it on linkedin and, and do some broetry there yeah i mean I, I i i appreciate that you're saying this because i i don't know how many times we have to tell people like hey you have to say your opinion you have to say something different yeah, yeah. can't just it's not me too. It's not, it's not an article me too, you know, content well, me too. Well, there, there are a few, there are types of CEOs who don't like to, who don't like to do that. And there's, and that's a problem. So you can't really do that for them. You have to explain that. And I, I don't know. Yeah. I can't, I, I'm the, the, your, your biggest issue is that you can't say, yeah, you're, you're dumb and you probably shouldn't do this thing. Yeah. Uh, and that's fine. I, I don't think everybody should be able to say that, but if they're listening to me, then I'm telling them that they're dumb. And I'm in a situation now where I have a client that's, that wants to do this sort of thing. One of the higher ups is very open and, and like, and fluid. And I could say, we're going to write a story about how to pick a desk chair. <laughs> and he would be, that's great. But the other one is super, super, um, He's like, well, uh, don't lean them towards the desk chair. Yeah, yeah, don't lean them towards the desk chair. Or don't we? we this is this isn't this isn't our message, right? Our right. message isn't about desk chairs. Our message is about, uh, I don't know, the future of whatever. And we can't mention the desk chair because that's that's like saying uh, that's that takes them away from the message. Well, right. what the real value is is that you become the expert in desk chairs, and somebody says, "Hey, I saw your TechCrunch post about de desk chairs," or "I think you're." I think it was really cool of you to say that the air air on isn't as great as they, everybody says it is. Mm -hmm. And that becomes, that becomes the story as opposed to we're the greatest company in the world. You should use us. And here's, here are the five reasons why, and here's why we're better than everybody else. And also here's a point about how our technology is cool. So you're in this, you're in this 
this, this problem because that one CEO, he doesn't care what goes out. And the other C CEO is so, so particular about what goes out that nothing goes out, which is really right. problematic. What would you say? So we, we, you know, we wrestle with this content piece all the time with people. And then they're like, oh, well, we did that content on, I'm just going to say TechCrunch. We did that content on TechCrunch and didn't do anything for us. And they did one piece of content. Yeah. What, what would you say for the, like, you know, as far as like repetition and and consistency? I, I'm always telling people, like, you need to do this on a long-term basis. It's not a one-off. No, no. There's, so, so of late, especially in TechCrunch, uh, there's the, there's no there's no such thing as the TechCrunch boost anymore, and there used to be like the Dig Boost and all these other things that you could do, maybe a Reddit boost, but really, you can honestly get like eight clicks for any for any post that goes up anyway. Yeah. So I don't tell I don't care if you're talking about Forbes, Fortune, even LinkedIn for most people works way better than works way better than some of these established things, and there's a reason. It's because people don't click through anymore. People look at the headline. If it's an interesting headline, they're going to hit it and look at it. But if it's not an interesting headline, they're going to they're gonna bypass it. But those for those X hundred people who read your story, then it's going to be X hundred people. It's not, you're not going to get that. They, they're going to remember that you wrote it, liquidity was, or whatever was cool. The company was cool. And that it's a, and that you're an interesting person to talk to about X, Y, or Z. Desk chairs, or I don't know, or the like latest in generative AI, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's the misnomer, right? A lot of people have now is like, oh, let's just hit it and put it. Let's do one, and then you know what I'd like to actually pick your brain about is also cost, right? Where we'll tell them like, okay, well, it costs this much to produce this article. They don't want to write it themselves, so it's painful for them to write. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what's going on when when journalists are pricing and content writers are pricing these articles. What are they basing this on? Because like you just said, clicks are down. So what is the, what is the, are we basing it on time spent quality of article? Like how are we, how should we be pricing what we're putting out? Well, you should price it based on the, the amount of experience and, and, and amount of feedback that you're going to get from the CEO. If the CEO can sit there and this is, this is what I always recommend. Okay. And it doesn't have to necessarily be CEO, it could be the CTO, anybody. Go for a walk with the dog and record themselves talking about this, the topic that they're at, at hand. Mm -hmm. I think this is good because of X, Y, Z, the three best products that I like that, that they are doing this. And remember, you should always involve like other people's products. Other, get, yeah. Get, yeah, get everybody, get everybody, like it's a big happy family. That's the, and if, the, and if they produce a five minute, uh, five minute discussion, recorded discussion, then it's so, uh, it's so much better for the writer. And that's, that's almost instantaneous content. You can produce that. You can produce that instantly. If the writer has to start to research and also know what's going on inside the, the, right, the, the CEO's head, then we're in a whole different ballpark. Then that's like, that's hours of work, hours of research. And it's highly problematic. And then the back and forth associated with that with a particularly picky CEO or a particularly psycho, uh, psychopathic CEO is really, really unaccept unacceptable for most writers. What so has been lose. the worst? What has been the worst back and forth you've had? Do you have an example? I think like recently we did a, like a, it, there was a post that went back, back and forth, like about 20 times. And it went from, it went from, this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be a nice, like light post about, uh, I forget what the topic was, but it was, it was about the business and it turned into a super deep, super intense, like boardroom missive that needed to go out. So. The initial, the initial request was, Hey, we just got to send out this cool post and let's get it out there a little bit. And then it turned into like, because this, because the CEO had turned into a, turned into a missive of it, it turned into a, a really buttoned up and formal thing. So, mm -hmm. and nobody really tells the writer that up until the point when they say this has to be rewritten. The, the worst thing, the worst thing that happens in this case is that I don't know what I want, but this ain't it is the absolute, absolute worst oh, for yeah. any writer. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you guys, you guys are dealing that as, uh, dealing with that as well. Oh yeah. Um, so. And then we'll even give them, I even try to like go as far as give them suggestions. Well, is it this angle? Is it this angle? They'll be like, no, yeah. no, no. You're like, what, well, then what is it? Yeah. Yeah. Like again, the, 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 the key is, is there needs to be a lot of feedback or else if there's no feedback, then they have to accept that what's, what's going to come out of this thing is, 
not going to be exactly what they're looking for, which is problematic on their end, but not problematic on my end because I can always rewrite it and take more time. Right, right. What do you what do you expect to happen with like content and media? And I, I just did a media relations conversation and we were just talking about how much more difficult it's become to just get the media's interest on anything. What what do you think the kind of trend will sway in 2024 of like this next year? What is that going to look like? The the breakdown between like submitted content versus reported content and like interesting startup, like, you know, that kind of new. Yeah. Well, so so what I've like, for example, I wrote a thing called Sublime Wire, sublimewire.com. And it's basically it's basically for journalists. And you can you can put in a press release and it'll rewrite the press release and you in a in a voice that you you request. So it's an automatic it's an automatic content generation system. Beautiful. I made it so I could recreate myself circa twenty two or two thousand four when I was like twenty five and writing twenty six posts a day on Gizmodo all by myself. And I created so I could redo that because I think that's the that's the low hanging fruit when it comes to content creation. Now the trick is is now I only need one person to do that that scut job of producing these quick things. Mm-hmm. Now, is the CEO going to be happy that their press release was kind of like chunked up and turned into a turned into a like a, a AI generated blurb? Probably not. Is the journalist going to be happy that they're not doing the easy work anymore? Probably not. Is the reader going to be happy? The reader doesn't really care. I mean, most PR, most press, press release, press release to, to journalism. Uh, the ratio. Uh, the race, it, it's the, the, the value there is, is fairly limited, except for like the, the CEO's grandma who wants to go see that somebody wrote about their, their, their grandson's story or their granddaughter's uh, website. So a lot of that stuff, that, that, that ha- what happens is you basically replace the, the younger journalists with longer journalists, plural, with one journalist who can use generative AI to produce content very, very quickly. And that's going to happen. And as everybody's going to scream, everybody's going to cry, and but it's going to happen. And it's uh, it's already been happening for for a while. Just nobody's really noticed. Yeah. And when it does happen, it hap- when people do notice, it's because they just coded it wrong. Uh, they the made a mistake. I, yeah. Yeah. And so what, ha- what, what you're going to get is you're going to get one person who's like, click, 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 blast out 30 stories a day, and they're going to be fine. And then you're going to have two or three people, not 20 people, who are writing in, uh, investigations or writing in- interviews or doing longer form stuff or doing TikTok videos or whatever is going to be the big thing. So how do you get through? So now the gatekeeper is that, that person who just graduated college and wants to be a journalist and their whole job is clicking a button like a cnc operator oh. and then trying to get in touch and trying to get in touch with like the the higher ups as well is going to be difficult too so the yeah. so the, the gatekeeping is going to be immense there so uh, two things can happen you can either be really really friendly with that person who presses the button to make the ai right or you just create your own media and just put it on the web, put it on your own website, SEO it properly, and just tell your own story. Yeah. To a degree, that's the best way to do it at this point. Like if I'm looking for, I don't know, Sure headphones or something like that, I'm gonna I'm gonna find it on Sure's website. Maybe yeah. I'm gonna find a review. Maybe I'm gonna find a review or two. And maybe what Sure should do is kind of like create their own video reviews, do all that other stuff. I mean, maybe hire somebody to do it for them. Yeah. Um, well, you know, like I be. think, like running running warehouse kind of d- did adopted that, right? Like they did that whole thing where they have this whole series where they're just like reviewing all their own. St- it's not running warehouse brand stuff, but they take all the products and they just review it themselves. Yep. They're like, look, people are going to shop here. They're going to look for the content here. Our our like experts are going to review it just for them for our customers. Mm-hmm. And what so I think they did this like they actually did a very a solid job because I know when I'm buying stuff i'm looking at their videos half the time you know and 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 then you're like wait a minute i'm that's the, actually the retailer but right yeah. well just right there well, so I mean, they just hired a they just hired dan ackerman who was editor chief of gizmodo for a minute he just quit okay. uh because gizmodo's terrible and he just he's now head of microsoft uh, micro centers content oh okay yeah is, so he's doing like a, he's doing a website for, he's doing like videos and web and website stuff for Microcenter, which is pretty interesting. It's like 
and micro center is a retailer. They're going to sell a bunch yeah. of computers. And if I have, if I have a video on the product page versus a video of some guy looking really weird in a, in a YouTube thumbnail, what am I going to go to? Go I'd to rather, page. yeah, much rather go to the product yeah. page. Absolutely. And again, as a journalist, as, as a lover of the truth, is this ideal, but it's not like, it's not like CNET or ZDNet or a lot of these companies uh, were telling the absolute truth. They were telling the truth long enough so they could, or well enough that they could keep maintain their access, uh, right. which is also a problem. And I mean, AI doesn't really care about access. It, it, it just rewrites, it just writes stuff that, that happens. So. Right. Yeah. That's interesting viewpoint too. I think um, the other thing that you kind of, you didn't bring it up, but it kind of came up to my mind was all the affiliate marketing now. So a lot of the, you know, especially when it comes to consumer tech, right? All the affiliate mm -hmm. partnerships with Amazon and, and stuff like that. I mean, half of them won't even cover you if you're not living on Amazon. So what's the point? Yeah. So it's, so yeah, all, all the affiliate stuff, like, I mean, Wirecutter and those guys kind of ruin that, that market for everybody. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I like this is a, this is like really interesting on lots of different perspectives, obviously, for me, because I, I love hearing uh, from people who know what's going on in journalism. But I think the, the last question I kind of wanted to answer on this for thought leadership content, we're talking about content specifically of you talked a little bit about what editors expect and what you should expect as far as producing content, being collaborative, giving your input when they do content and thought leadership public published content, earned contributed pieces or whatever. Can you give us a little bit of insight on the process? What happens when, once you've submitted your content, what kind of happens over there in the editorial bay, I guess? Nothing is the easiest answer. That's why your content has to be super, super sharp when it goes out. Proofreading and proofreading again is, is your best bet. A lot, of these, a lot of these organizations have one or two people. Any place that you're paying for content to get to place content, they yeah. they better have somebody managing that. That seems that seems really silly. But if you're if it's like a it's if it's like somebody who's generally saying here's a guest post, let's we'll take your guest post. If it's good enough, then you should probably do them the favor of making sure that's everything's spelled right, because they don't have the they don't have the resources. There's there's the the newslet newsrooms have been gutted. Wired laid off a bunch of people recently. I've been seeing I've been seeing layoffs. People just leaving almost constantly. So there's nobody left uh, to, to even keep the lights on. So you're in this, you're in a very weird position of, of being really, really, really nice to a person who's exhausted. And that's the way to think about this. This is, this person is, this person is a, is a waiter on a Sunday morning at a, uh, at a Denny's next to a church. They, they're, they're being run ragged. Yeah. So the nicer you can be to them, the, the better. The, the content has to be on point. The topic has to be very, very useful. And 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 very click worthy. Uh, nobody wants to hear that, but that's exactly the situation. When is it time to hire a CFO? When is the best time to what's what is the best? Uh, I don't know. Uh, IDE for beginner programmers, that kind of stuff. That's exactly the kind of thing. The the stuff that would show up on Hacker News is exactly the kind of thing that you want to be submitting. Anything about the I don't know. Your personal opinion on the future of gift boxes, useless, uh, but what is, what's one of the, what's one of the coolest gift boxes you've seen and why was it so cool? You bring that gift box company up, you bring yourself up, et cetera, that kind of thing. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot to think about. I like the idea of doing a lot of in-house uh, production as far as content goes. So I'm guessing journalists are basically turning into writers content development content developers that none of them want to admit it but i guess that's the uh i guess that's the situation mm -hmm. it's a uh it's a frustrating it's a frustrating situation to somebody who's been a dude and i i wasn't even there during the, the heyday when i don't know the at condy nast they used to pick you up in a black car to drive you back to connecticut uh with Graydon carter it's that that those those days are long gone the days of being able to make Two thousand, three thousand bucks on a story, absolutely gone. Uh, and the the answer is is everybody's just going to become content producers, and they're actually going to become machine operators, which is even scarier and more 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 frightening. But what are you going to do? Where do you, where do you get your news, John? Nowhere really anymore. 
I mean, anything that pops up on the screen is 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 news. I'll read I'll read like the New York Times headlines and I'll read hacker news pretty regularly. Uh, but I used to have a I used to have a diet of like I don't know thirty sites a day, and it would be crypto, it would be gadgets, it would be all this other stuff. At this point, the there we're we're in an interstitial period in terms of technology. The technology that's coming out right now is not. And this is particularly to technology might not be ethical for everybody, but the, and you can even argue that the news that's coming out right now isn't, isn't that interesting. There's nothing earth shattering. The, the most earth shattering thing was, was generative AI, and that's going to change us from within very, very quickly, but it's not, there's no news associated with it. It's just the idea of starting to use these tools in a way that's really unique. But up until recently, nothing has happened. I mean, you can't, I can't name a single massive phone launch. I can't name a single massive computer launch. There's no, no important games. There's no important consoles. There's no important things because there is so much stuff where the, the, the butter has been spread over the bread so thinly that yeah. there's no, there's no chunks of flavor anymore. Yeah. You made me hungry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hungry for news, hungry for everything exactly. I can. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think this was awesome. And if you guys want to talk to John, you can contact me, Ranjini, at the Silver Telegram. Or John, what's the best email to reach you at? Uh, just john at biggs.cc. There we go. We work with John and their team on content all the time, and it's, it's awesome. It's a great collaboration. So remember to be collaborative, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining us.